Di Jindal. Qatar has released the eight Navy veterans who were sentenced to death on alleged espionage charges. Seven of them have already returned to India. New Delhi's diplomatic intervention led to the communication of the capital punishment to an extended prison term earlier. The veterans, including Captain Nav Navji Navtej Gill and Saurabh Vashisht, Commanders Purindru Tiwari, Amit Nagpal, S.K. Gupta, B.K. Verma, Sugunakar Pakala and Sailor Ragesh were detained in August of 2022 on undisclosed charges. Joining us at this point of time is uh, Ambassador Kanwal Sibbal, former Indian Foreign Secretary to, to India. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and thank you so much for taking out time and speaking to News X. I'm going to kickstart uh, by asking you, how do you view the sudden release of the Navy veterans from Qatar prison? Well, uh, I think a lot of credit goes to uh, Prime Minister, who spoke to the Emir of Qatar at the COP conference, uh, the climate change conference in uh, Dubai, in the UAE. And obviously, uh, that uh, message that uh, Prime Minister had conveyed uh, about uh, the useful role that the Indian community is playing in Qatar got registered. Uh, and uh, ultimately, uh, it appears that the Emir has pardoned the eight Indian naval uh, personnel. I must say that uh, India has handled this uh, issue very maturely. Rather than getting involved in polemics and uh, publicly criticizing uh, what happened in Qatar, um, they played it very low-key. Continued to say repeatedly at the level of the spokesperson, MEA spokesperson, that this is a very sensitive matter uh, which should be dealt uh, quietly through diplomatic channels. Um, knowing the, that Qatar doesn't have the kind of uh, legal system that uh, Western countries have, for instance, uh, or countries like India have, uh, and that public opinion uh, in uh, Qatar uh, is controlled, so it's not as if you can reach out to public opinion through NGOs or civil society and uh, bring about indirect pressure on the government, not necessarily at the government level, uh, but through Indian um, NGOs and civil society. Uh, so I think uh, rather than giving it too much publicity and making it hard uh, for uh, the Qatari Amir uh, to take a decision because uh, given the mentality of the Arab leaders, they wouldn't like to give the impression that they're yielding under pressure. Uh, hmm. So I think at the end of the day, uh, the Qatar Amir has taken a very sensible decision and has protected the very uh, vital and important India-Qatar relationship. As you know, they are the biggest supplier of natural gas to India. And this is something which uh, Qatar prizes and would like to continue uh, because uh, with all the climate change uh, issues that have come on the table and switch over to green technologies and everything else, uh, they're also aware that uh, their gas resources might actually be very important for the international community for the coming years. But at some stage, uh, everybody will have to uh, shift to other forms of renewable energy. So I think uh, that must have also weighed, and despite, and also the fact that 700,000 Indians who work in in, in Qatar. Uh, so I think uh, both from the Indian side and at the level of the Amir of Qatar, uh, pragmatism, good sense, uh, diplomacy uh, has worked, and we should be happy that uh, we've had a happy ending. Absolutely, sir. What do you think would have persuaded Qatar authorities and judiciary to release the veterans? I think it is a decision of uh, the Amir, ultimately, uh, that has prevailed. Uh, so, see, they went through a legal process. Uh, we do not know actually what were the charges. Still today, they have not been revealed. Uh, there is speculation that uh, there were some espionage uh, charges involved that our naval personnel was spying on behalf of Israel for some uh, submarines that uh, uh, Italy was building for them. But this was all in the realm of speculation. These were not uh, uh, shared 
the charges i believe were not even shared by uh, by the qatari authorities with our government now when the qatari lower courts uh, took certain decisions uh, that may have been uh, uh, done uh, by elements within uh, qatar which for some reasons i don't under pressure from pakistan linked lobbies or or turkish linked lobbies or whatever uh, may have tried to oust india from this sensitive area because it's a very competitive area and india has the wherewithal to train these these people so there may have been extraneous factors at work and uh, so when the issue got raised up uh, to the uh, level of uh, the amir i suppose then uh, he took the decision that he did which as i said uh, is preserves india qatar ties uh, because it would have been absolutely intolerable if these people uh, had continued uh, to be imprisoned in qatar uh, for years uh, in some cases uh, it would have become a huge problem in anything relation between the two countries right so the veterans have of course been absolved of all charges against them who do you think might have been involved in the con cons conspiracy targeting indian veterans as i mentioned just now that uh, i understand i mean <laughs> it's all speculation uh, that uh, there was some unhappiness uh, that uh, india an indian company uh, based in singapore uh, which employs uh, ex naval personnel uh, who are very good at training uh, so that um, they would they, that in a competitive world they would have liked to oust uh, india from this little uh, sensitive not little this important sensitive uh, defense area uh, so as i said it could be uh, turkish linked lobbies or uh, pakistan linked lobbies which may have been at work because qatar as you know uh has uh, some very strong islamist elements uh, in the country let's not forget that uh, so that might have been uh, uh, one of one of the reasons uh, or it might uh, just have been uh, some planted information um, some misinformation which the lower co lower courts uh might have been misled by uh, and felt that there was a genuine case against our naval personnel or espionage or, or whatever uh, and that may account for uh, the decisions they took but as it moved up in the judicial system coupled with the pressures that came behind the scene pressures that came from india including from our embassy in qatar uh, and of course as i said the critical meeting between our prime minister and the emir of qatar uh, this uh, matter has been sorted out I do not know whether uh, this is again speculation because, as you know, Petronet has just signed a huge deal uh, with uh, Qatar, seventy-five billion dollar deal uh, for supply of natural gas uh, to India till twenty forty-eight. Now, whether there is a quid pro quo here, uh, a subtle quid pro quo that you sign this big deal and now a naval personnel. get released uh, is a matter of speculation but uh, one cannot uh, rule this out but of course the point is that uh, india is switching to natural gas in a very big way and therefore we need natural gas and qatar is the closest source we have we have australia and other countries but uh, it's the closest source we have therefore it makes economic sense uh, for us to have to prolong this uh, uh, extend this deal with qatar till 2048 but maybe maybe there is this commercial trade off that is also taking in place i had say you know this is being looked at as a diplomatic victory for india how do you think this was uh, made possible well first of all don't forget that india has a very high profile in in west asia <clears throat> i mean millions of indians who are working there and supporting those economies and they have moved up the ladder they are no longer on the construction workers and this and that uh they, they are actually managing in many ways uh, these these societies these countries uh with their business acumen entrepreneurial acumen their technological prowess and everything else and then as you see 
how our relationship with uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and especially UAE has got totally uh, transformed and we have become a major player uh, in, in this region. We've signed the FTA with the UAE. Uh, we have this ITU too uh, and of course the India, uh, well, Middle East, Europe uh, corridor project which for the moment is on hold because of what's happening in Palestine. But nevertheless, India's profile in this area is growing enormously. And Qatar cannot be insensitive to this. So Qatar therefore has to take into account uh, the developments in the, in the region involving uh, India. And therefore, there may be therefore, uh, you know, a view at the, at the highest level that uh, let us sort this matter out and let's bring our relationship with India uh, to normality and build this relationship uh, uh, further because India uh, is going to be and already probably is the largest importer of, uh, of um, energy, uh, traditional energy, uh, <clears throat> uh, because of our needs. So I suppose uh, these pragmatic considerations uh, and geopolitical considerations must have also uh, worked. So then what does this say about uh, India-Qatar ties, according to you? Well, we, we, a, a bigger issue has been uh, removed uh, from the relationship. And as I said, since we have signed the uh, big agreement uh, to buy natural gas uh, from Qatar, by, signed by Petronet, uh, which means that the relationship uh, will proceed now on a normal uh, basis rather than uh, uh, being weighed over uh, by this uh, uh, case of the incarcerated uh, naval personnel, which is a very emotional issue uh, in India and humiliating to some extent that uh, these people have were charged and then initially uh, given the death sentence, which were later commuted to now to very varying terms of imprisonment. But uh, it's, it does. It did affect India's uh, image and standing, and uh, but India, as I said, has uh, uh, handled it quietly behind the scenes, effectively, uh, understood the psyche uh, of uh, uh, not only Qatar but the Arab world in general, and relied on the Amir of Qatar uh, to take the right decision, which he has. So then must the government of India look into the matter and find out who was behind this conspiracy? Why, 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 why bother about that? The matter is over. They have come back home. The matter is closed. What's the point in flogging it uh, unnecessarily? Right. So in your assessment, what kind of provisions should be put in place in order to ensure that something like this does not happen in the future? Well, this is a this is a unique case. I mean, it's not that our neighbor personnel uh, are involved uh, in training uh, here and there and everywhere. So it's not as if they're engaged in uh, espionage. And this is a unique case. You can't sort of uh, uh, say that this uh, is a pattern or is something which uh, needs to be protected uh, against in the future in the other world or elsewhere. No, it's it's a. It's a sui generis case uh, and uh, it has been solved and we should just leave it at that uh, rather than, uh, uh, you know, create new con controversies uh, by uh, probing into this and uh, making it out that uh, Qatar has been high-handed and, uh, and that it acted uh, illegitimately. It doesn't serve our purpose at all. Right, so absolutely. I'm going to ask, my, ask you my final question. You know, can we expect cooperation from Qatar to find out the real motive behind targeting Indian Navy veterans? But as I said, what's the point in that? The matter is closed. They have uh, released these people. They have come back home. They have not even laid the condition that they must uh, serve uh, prison sentences uh, back home because we have this uh, agreement with them under which... Uh, if uh, Indians are uh, sentenced uh, to imprisonment in Qatar, then they can uh, actually be sent home uh, to uh, uh, to then uh, uh, pass their to then uh, you know remain in prison in India 
for the period for which they had been imprisoned, although of course Qatar did not uh, ratify this, so maybe we haven't ratified, I don't know. But the point is that uh, there was this provision, but there is no condition that they have to be imprisoned in India and serve the remaining of their prison sentence. So, so I don't think any useful purpose is served in reopening this issue and trying to probe further and investigate. Uh, we played it low key uh, and got what we wanted, and we should just play it low key again. Ambassador Sibbal, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast and sharing your perspectives with our viewers. Uh, uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.